Hello everyone, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3 5th Edition Edition Solo Runs. The titles will just get, keep getting longer. So, last time we finished up in this chapel. We got all of its loot, killed all that there was to slay inside. And now we have to make careful consideration about how we're going to approach what comes next because there isn't I don't believe anything apart from 1v1ing against Gale which I'm hesitant to do because of his spellcasty tricks I don't think there are many other encounters for us to have that aren't simply getting to the Druid's Grove combat with the goblins that is to come. So we will definitely short rest before then. In fact, there's the shouting. Here's our short rest. Let's take stock of what loot we have here. Let's sort by type, please. Right, do we want to equip the Watcher's Guide. 1d8 piercing, two-handed weapon, whereas the longsword is versatile, so we can wield it in one hand and do 1d8, or two hands as 1d10. Uh, when the spear misses its target, the wielder's next attack the target is made with advantage, which is very good, but I don't think right now we can afford to lower our um, armor class that much. In fact, if we go to this screen, we can see all our inventory and all our stats. Our AC is currently 18, which is really good. We want it to be nice and high because without that, we're going to have a lot of issues with getting hit really hard, really fast for what little health we have. So I'm not prepared to give up the shield yet. We have a couple of basic poisons that we can cover our weapon with. Potion of Fire Resistance I don't think is going to be of use here. And we're wearing the best armor that we have. Jewelry and stuff to be sold. So there isn't anything else I don't think that we can plot or scheme for ourselves to have any greater benefit in the fight to come. So we just have to hold our ground carefully. I would like, yep, sword and board for now, because we want our AC to be up. And then this is the rock here that we kind of have a height advantage. We're not going to be too close to the fray immediately. Of course, we can make a target of ourselves. We are still 274 XP away from a level, so I don't think we're going to get that through the course of this encounter. We have one spiked bulb left and one void bulb left. Let's sneak. I don't know if that's going to be of any benefit to us when the foes arrive, but if we can get an attack in first, I'll be very grateful. The game taunting us there with an autosave that we can't use because any death is a true death for us. What's going on? Goblins are on our tail. Open the gate, Zevlor, now! You let goblins here? Where is the druid? Please, there's no time! And we are under attack. Form a line. Right, where are we in the initiative? Last. Good stuff. Oh no, that's not us. Where are we? Oh, like sixth. That's not so bad. We have someone right up in our face, which I guess is kind of better for us. It means that we can have higher impact immediately. So we're going to go ahead straight with the 1d6, uh, 1d8 plus 3 slashing damage. 
And that's a bad time. I don't want to action surge just yet, so we'll see how things progress for another round. I've never seen this encounter where the goblins win and all of the very druids die. I wonder how that goes. Here is Will, one of the possible companions to the campaign, although he shall not be joining us, of course. And obviously, everything that they don't kill is one thing that will be forced to kill if everybody else should die. Magic Missile there, doing great work. They're making the foolish decision to attack us with a ranged weapon right up and close to our face. It means that attack would have been made with disadvantage. That is to make two attack rolls and use the worst one, and if that doesn't beat our AC, then they perish. And we can't hit anything, so we are going to action surge now. Because I would rather get this thing killed so that we can start long uh, short bowing down in the fray over there. And there's a crit that we needed quite badly. We'll turn and face the fight and then wait for another round to go by. It's now five of us versus six of them. There's an excellent Eldritch Blast. That is a bad time. Better them than us, though, of course. And there's another fighter amongst our mitts. Good, we might actually be able to sway this in our favor. They're going to have a hard time killing the guy with 34 HP and three mirror images. So maybe it could just end up the three of us. Who needs the most help? Also, who's in range? Basically no one. All right, I'm going to go after this guy so that Will can move over there and get into that fight. So close. But yeah, for right now, I'm very happy with the uh, distance between us and the foes. Nice to see them wasting their action surges. Clearly spent all their spell slots on magic missiles. They're down to just cantrips. Right, that one went down. The warg and the bugbear still have a lot of health. The goblin boss also pretty healthy, which is a shame. Let's take the 50% to hit. Big whiff. Yeah, Will's going to hopefully get in there closer to the fight. We do, of course, have our eight extra temporary hit points thanks to the Warhorn that was blown. Oh, he does still have first level spell slots to spend. Problem becomes when all of this resolves and we're the only target left. That's going to be a bad time. Right, the 40% chance is worse, but I'd rather take out the one with the lower health so that there's only one of them to fight, not two. I'm talking these really big guys. Bad times. If 
those moments where it could still go entirely either way between all of the misses, the crits, the seemingly unlimited magic missiles. Alright, we can almost get this guy 1d6. If we can hit, we've got like a, what is it, an 87% chance of killing him. No, the other way around, 13%. Two numbers on a d6. But still, we missed. That's what counts. Alright. We're gonna get there. Hey, we hit something. Unfortunately, once this fight is over and we can get inside the Druid's Grove, we'll have a far higher chance of uh, finding some better gear and doing some trading and whatnot. We've also got a lot of experience for a lot of these things, which is exciting. Every little helps. Come on, boss man. Yeah, get those cantrips in. Man, this is a, a lot of loss of life. And we are not really being that much of a help. That was the last of them. Inside! All of you, more may follow! All two of us. Right. Let's do a instant round of pillaging. Right. Let's see the spoils. We got those gloves of power, but we do not have the mark of the absolute yet, so that's a risk to us. We got a scroll of grease, some goblin weaponry, and we picked up some gold as well. So now we can... Head into the Druid's Grove. I know that there are other encounters to do down the way here, but being alone, the safety of the Grove will be very welcome for even if a moment. So we certainly want to find Aaron, the shopkeep here towards the entrance. And there's also a few supplies to be found around and about. A nice meal will mean long rest possibilities for us. And vegetables are very welcome. And here is Aaron. So we can sell off a bunch of the stuff we don't need. Refugees. Well met. And th is there anything you need? I'm act fast if you do. Looking for what you're after. So let's sell all our wares because that's just kind of stuff we know is supplementary to our needs. I know we picked up some extra jewelry. Uh, I know that downstairs there is a smith who might give us a better price for various weapons and whatnot. And boy, do we have a lot of them. So this guy only has 989 gold. Is there anything in magic items that we want first? When the wearer stands in a damage that's just fire and deals damage, the target also suffers the effects. Not one for us really, because I don't want to uh, necessarily be standing in fire if it can be helped. Dragon's Grasp, 1d6 slashing, applies burning on hit. Would be good, but the 1d6 I guess 1d6 is obviously worse than 1d8 for slashing damage. But if the burning does damage at least twice, then that does seem like an upgrade. Rain Dancer, we could take Create Water, but for us, that doesn't seem to be too prevalent. Scroll of Entangled doesn't have an image on it, which is interesting. 
the arrows are actually an intriguing prospect because those are things that we can take good advantage of. And of course, the healing potions are going to be stuff that we want. So we'll take all of those. All of the gold, that nearly gets us to the price we're bargaining for. Plus one leather armor is not going to be quite the improvement we need. But we could certainly take plus one on our dexterity saving throws. It's one of the most common saving throws that you have to make. All of the thieves tools we can carry because we're going to be breaking a lot of those because we're not very good at it. Uh, I will take the fire arrow. How about just kind of one of each? And then we have at least some options. Wow, this got way more expensive way faster than I expected. Arrow of Darkness, 460 gold. We'll skip that one for now. And we can obviously sell off some of this extra weaponry here. The guy downstairs doesn't need it all. We just have to get up to 1388's worth. And I mean, we might get a better price downstairs, but I'm not here for that much min-maxing. It's going to be basically all of it, isn't it? Which is actually quite amusing. 290, exactly. You, sir, you have a deal. So he now has all of our crap. And we've made gold off of that transaction, which is great. Uh, scrolls we will leave for now. So there may be some spell casting in our future, but for now, not quite. Before we do anything else around the Druid's Grove, let's go downstairs, pay a visit to the smith, see if they have any plus one weapons or anything that we want to be taking advantage of immediately. And the trader with the crazy tail. Hey, buddy. Thanks for fighting off those goblins. You're very welcome. You need to replace any gear? My selection's pretty slim. I had to leave most of my equipment in Elturel. Right, what do we have here? Plus one scale mail armor. So, this is 15 AC. The Githyanki half plate we have is 15 AC. And both are disadvantaged on stealth rolls, so that's no good to us, really. Um, plus one boots of athletics are better than our boots that are just shoes. Reasonably expensive, though. Plus one strength on saves. Let's put this helmet on before we forget. Plus one dagger, plus one crossbow, plus one light hammer. Quarterstaff, scimitar, spear, and a trident. Not really the kind of stuff I was l expecting or looking for. Oh. Probably should have taken protect against critical, critical hits over plus one dexterity saving throws. We will definitely do that because protecting against crits is going to be... Excuse me. Oh, well, we can't unequip this out. Oh, we can. Uh, protecting against crits is going to really extend the longevity of this run because getting crits in one turn where we can go from kind of 15 health to zero is going to be huge for us. So we will certainly take advantage of that. We are not currently wearing gloves. Plus one strength to saving throws. I don't see why we wouldn't. We have a shield, we don't want the scale mail, and none of these weapons are really the plus one weapon that we're looking for. Bloodied Great Axe, Uncommon Martial two-handed melee weapon. It's not versatile, so we can't wield it with a shield. When the wielder has 50 hit point fifty percent hit points or less, they deal an additional 1d6 slashing damage. It's good. But I'm not prepared quite yet to be giving up our shield, so let's trade for this stuff. Uh, we can sell that off. 
I'm going to sell this as well. It's not even worth that much. Creatures hit by an attack may receive a d4 penalty to attack rolls and saving throws. Question is, will we get the Mark of the Absolute later? I guess it can't hurt to try. Let's put on the Amulet of Vost Voices as well. Otherwise, nothing here for us. Let's rebalance that trade and make it. Put on our shiny new helmet. And our shiny gloves. We are becoming a knight in shining armor. It's quite exciting. Uh, no longbow here. Just a heavy crossbow, which is not what we want for our ranged attacks, I don't think. So, I think that's all the trading that we need to do. And that is a great pace to end the session. So, with our improved gear and our eagerness to go out and get what can't be very much. 49 XP to level 3. We will do that as soon as we can because then we can take our subclass for our fighter at level 3. And then we really will be looking at getting into some bigger fights with our HP pool much bigger and far more abilities available to us. Until then though, thank you ever so much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, please do consider subscribing or pressing that like button. It does really mean a lot to me. And if you have any questions or comments, put them down below. I'll endeavor to answer to everything I can. Thank you ever so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.